How about them Gators? Yeah! Ricky, I'm going to ask you. Oh, yeah. Are you going to take one to the house against South Carolina? Absolutely. Absolutely. Second and 15, Merge pumps. Over the middle, Pearsall. Touchdown, Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of High Top Sports. Good evening, good morning, whatever time you're watching here. Happy Sunday to all to all of you. Thank you for hopping in here this morning. We've got a little poll going, which we're going to read here in just about a minute. But i got to tell you something, boys and girls. I'm feeling extra good. I'm feeling extra spicy on this beautiful Sunday afternoon after the Florida Gators took down the South Carolina Gamecocks, boys and girls. We have a jam-packed show. We're going to go over recruiting. We're going to go over the game last night offensively, defensively. A little throwback to the past here for 1993. We'll get into all of that. Some cool stuff there. We're going to talk about Trey Smack. <clears throat> King Smack put on an absolute show yesterday. Just dinger after dinger. We're going to talk about, see what the, the recruits had to say, as well as the players. They were tweeting yesterday. All in all, phenomenal day to be a Florida Gator, right? To be fired up. Uh, hell of a day on Twitter yesterday. You guys saw the clip of me going absolutely berserk. Um, it's been a blast. It's been a fun, a fun 24 hours. Uh, to the haters, really quick, just let me get this out of the way so we can get on to the show. If you guys act like you beat the SEC champion, you beat a one four, you can suck it. Okay, like I don't know how else to phrase it, right? Uh, I appreciate you coming in here and expressing your concerns about how we should be acting or not acting. But yeah, I mean, I think the best way just to kind of describe how I'm feeling about it is, I don't know, just put it up your butt sideways and let it ride. You know what I mean? That's kind of where I'm at with it on those things. But uh we're, we're going to have a good show today. I'm excited. I'm, I'm jam, it's jam-packed. Going to have a good one. So let's 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 start, jump right into it. Billy Napier, obviously, they had their press conference yesterday, and we're going to have some fun here. Uh, Edgar, who usually asks pretty good questions, sometimes his questions are a little probing, and they're, they're ballsy, I would say. And he had a question, I think, two weeks ago that I pulled up. I was like, hey, great question. And I think Billy didn't answer it properly because, look, at that time, Billy was kind of playing the defense role where he's being called out by Edgar. Billy's kind of in the, in the, now he's in the king's chair, right? He has a little more flexibility. So Edgar hits him with this question, and Billy's response is, is, is iconic. So let's watch that real quick. With, uh, when you hugged him, what was that on the flight? Just like you would think it would be. Yeah. Can you describe it? Yeah, I mean, I'm, come on now, Edgar. You got a lot of questions you can ask. <laughs> I don't know if that's one I would ask. Coach, what's... <laughs> Phenomenal response. Like... I think I got what Edgar was trying to say. Hey, like, how was that? How was that moment? How was that experience to, you know, just bring everybody in and be just so pumped for that win? And it's like, look, dude, like, I'm not here to get into our personal relationship. We're keeping it a buck here. Ask me about the football game. Don't ask me about my relationship with my guys because when we're losing, you don't ask me those kind of questions. All in all, I love the response. I thought it was hilarious. Love seeing Billy. You know, look, he's he's. I think I got my swagger back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's feeling pretty good. He's sitting there just kind of vibing, chilling. But look, he, here's the thing that I love about Billy. What I've always said, I hate and I love about him. It's just cool composure. We saw Beamer's press conference after the fact. Absolutely atrocious. Just throwing a complete fit. He looked like a three-year-old up there. Let me tell you what, what the issue was here. We can't get a stop. We got we call the right play. Nobody executes. Like the entire the entire thing was an absolute joke uh, of just how you how you should not handle yourself. And look, looking at that, they've recruited well thus far this season. But how do you look at that? Like, I don't want to play with that guy. You know what I mean? So all in all, uh, a, a phenomenal win for the for the Gators yesterday. Let's talk 1993 really quick. Trey Smack, the Lou Groza Award. Let me explain something to you here. We've had Judd Davis on the show a handful of times. Love the guy to death. He was tweeting yesterday. You know, Judd doesn't tweet too often. When Judd's tweeting... He's, he's fired up. He was fired up for Trace Mack. And I've talked to him about Trace Mack before and just what he's done. He's worked with Trace Mack and been close with the family and whatnot. And he's been excited for what he's been able to produce on the football field. He's never questioned Billy's call and not putting him in any sooner. But he's been excited to see what Trey can do. And he was fired up on Twitter yesterday about Trace Mack. It's funny watching Judd get, get rowdy about what Trey was able to do. Now, the reason why I bring this up, the Lou Groza Award is, is handing out to the best kicker in all of college football. And back in 1993, our boy... Uh, 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know how I muted us. Um, I apologize. Um, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I, don't know, I don't know how I got muted there. Uh, anyways, as I was talking about uh, 1993, let me go ahead and repeat myself here because I think I completely just <laughs> butchered this. Uh, so Trey Smack and obviously uh, Judd Davis. So Trey Smack, the Lou Groves Award is handed out to the best uh, kicker in all of college football. Uh, year in year. Back in 1993, Judd Davis won that award for the Florida Gators while he played for the team. And I can't believe I muted myself <laughs> the whole time. So my point was, again, Judd Davis won this award back in 1993. Judd Davis gets fired up about kickers, doesn't tweet too much, but he, he, he loves he loves when kickers are doing well. So Trey Smack obviously had a phenomenal game yesterday. Could he be up for grabs for the Luke Groza Award? I know he kind of stepped in late, but his performance yesterday outside of the blocked field goal was absolutely phenomenal. Hits a 54-yarder that would have went 69 yards. The kid was dialed in. And again, the blocked field goal, how much are you going to put that on him? You can't put that on him, right? It's not It's not on him at all. So looked exceptional. And the, the point that I want to give uh, kudos to as well is the transition to the uh, – during before halftime – and we had to switch onto the football field. Clocks running like 20 seconds left. We can't, we can't spike. It gets fourth and like, what, three? No timeouts left, right? The special team comes jogging onto the football field, gets set, boom, hits it. It was like a 36-yarder, I believe. Like, it had some ass behind it. So, incredible uh, just performance by the special teams. And again, Trey Smack hitting everything. I mean, with with ease. Didn't Never, never once in my butthole pucker, like, hey, we're not going to make this. And I feel like every time Florida has a phenomenal kicking staff, for some reason, the rest of the team seems to sync up. I'm not, I'm not crazy here, right? I mean, think about Eddie Panera. We had Eddie, 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 Eddie. I felt like that team just had a mojo to it when you get a kicker. It's crazy how much a good field goal kicker can do for you when you're dialed in. You know what I mean? So, look, I love this. Obviously, I'm, I'm stretching. I like to connect it because back in 1993, the Florida Gators went 11-2 when Judd Davis won this award, which is also why I kind of went blast to the past, why I was bringing all of this up. So, not saying we're going to go 11-2, and two, but right now we're 5-2. and two. You know, sometimes history likes to repeat itself. We win, we get another Groves Award winner here in, uh, in Trey Smack, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I apologize for the sound. I don't know why it kicked me off with the sound there. Maybe this maybe this little picture did that. I don't know. First time using this thing, though. <laughs> I appreciate your guys' patience and not uh, dumping me because I'm an idiot. So, two, Dom, you want your two bucks back? That's fine. Evan McPherson was solid, too. He was solid. Yes, I was going to mention him. I love me some McPherson. Obviously, kick for, the, kick for the Bengals now. He was a phenomenal job as well. Oh, boys. I apologize there for the mishap. Uh, let's get into next order of business. Boys, did... Did, did Billy hire an offensive coordinator? Huh? Because I just don't believe that, that that was Billy calling the plays, boys. I just, I'm, I'm not seeing it. You know what I mean? As much as I would, like, you know, love to believe it, you got to think there was something more behind the juice yesterday. Right? I've seen a couple people feel like they thought Ethan Callaway, the tight end coach, was calling a few plays. I was reading some forums, just kind of getting different people's perspective of it. Right, there's a few clips people were saying they saw like the there, were, there was calls being played and Billy wasn't paying attention to the football field. So did he take a step back? Because I did see him calling some plays. I, I don't know though. Right? It's just there's a lot of question marks. I think the play calling outside of a few times, you know what, you know what? I think Billy did call one play. It was a play that I almost threw my threw my remote through the TV when it was three and two, uh, or third and two, excuse me. And Mertz had been slicing and dicing them up on third down through the year the entire game. Third and 15, third and 12, didn't matter. Mertz was converting it. We're third and two. Offensive line hasn't blocked uh, anything all night long, and we decided to call an HB draw. I don't I don't know what the what. That was probably Billy going, hey, let me get the playbook real quick. I got something special for him, and completely butchered it. And Ethan was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need that back. Uh, but outside of that, man, I mean, I think phenomenal uh, uh, play calling. We, we, we got to see a side of Mertz that – we thought we saw where we could possibly see in Utah, and I think we saw it fully unleashed. Here's what's still concerning to me. Would love to see that run game be uh, become more effective because you don't want it to get too lopsided the other direction. And it is kind of uh, you know ironic. Early in the season, Shane Matthews claimed this and beat the drum on this that we would be seeing a high-tempo offense, a high-flying offense, and now we're starting to see it more so. Again, I would love to see the, 
the the running back game uh, become more effective. But a lot of that has to fall on the offensive line. And I was kind of I was extremely frustrated during the halftime show with Rob Sale and Co. and just the lack of production on the offensive side of things. Damian George can't seem can't seem to get you know he's got two left feet at times. Takes two steps forward, four steps back. It seems uh, recently. So I look you got two weeks to really put into some work. I know we were like, oh, Kingsley's out. I think Jake Slaughter's been doing a phenomenal job. He's ranked 30th in centers on the PFF. He's, he stepped up and done his job. I think Austin Barber's done well. Lindell Hudson's came in and did a good job. I, I just need to see some more cohesion uh, along that line to allow for the, the offense to flow in, in a sense to where it's more just like, hey, we're in control. I felt like, you know, I mean, we, we ran the ball 20 times yesterday and threw it for almost 50 times, which isn't what we normally do. I'm not against it. I know a lot of you loved it. But I don't. Again, I don't want to. I want us to be able to control what we want to do. Does that make sense? I don't want the defense to force our hand. So, we play a good team that has a better defense, that has better corners, and they force us to throw because our O line can't stop anything. And that's going to be an issue, right? So, again, we're getting ahead of it. But that's what Sunday shows for. We had yesterday's show. We talk shit. We get rowdy. That so forth. Today we kind of break down things we like, things we didn't like. That was part of the stuff. So, what is going on? Why does it keep muting me? Dude, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why it keeps doing this. I have zero clue why it's muting me. This is extremely frustrating. I... Golly, dude. I'm sorry, guys. I'm extremely frustrated. I don't know why it keeps muting me. I have no idea why it keeps muting me when I switch, when I switch over. Golly. Well, what I was talking about, I don't know why it keeps doing this, but what I was talking about was the graphics. It's extremely frustrating. Sorry. Um, was with this graphic here, I was explaining the yards. So we had obviously 495 yards passing to 465, or excuse me, 423 passing to 313. Rushing yards, uh, obviously that was a, a big factor that we need to improve on. And again, allowing them to have 152 rushing yards uh, is something that, you know, they haven't done well on and they, they, they murdered us on it. Same thing that happened with Kentucky. So we need that obviously needs to be a big factor. We'll get into that when we have our whole defensive segment here. Yards for play. This is what we'll get into in just a minute. But again, 7.4 to our 6.1. That was their big factor, their big reason for success yesterday. Because the rest of it on the way down, third down efficiency, about similar. I mean, they were a little more successful than we were. Fourth down efficiency, we were, we were damn near perfect. Total plays, we had more. Penalties, we crushed them 6 to 9. Did you guys see North Carolina had over 142 yards in penalties yesterday? Absolutely insane. And then time of possession. So I think we, we, we checked every box that we wanted to as an offense, right? We did what we wanted to do. Controlled the ball. Limit, limited the penalties, didn't have too many mistakes, right? We didn't have any turnovers. They had one turnover with an interception. So for the most part, we played pretty damn good football. Again, defensively, allowing 7.4 yards of play and 152 yards rushing, which isn't their strength. Spencer Rattler is their strength. That was the reason the game was closer than it really should have been. I think, again, we talked all week long. We felt we were the better team on paper. I, I believe that. I think we showed that. Although it was close, I understand that. Again, the rushing is where, where, where they got us. I mean, you take away... I don't know, let's just say half of that, that's a big factor for, you know, the game not being as close as it was because they were just able to run with ease. It's going to be a big focus for the defense for these next two weeks heading into Georgia. Look, I think what the offense showed is that we have an offense that can keep up with the ability with, uh, you know, most firepower in the SEC right now. I think LSU is probably the highest fire, 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 ha, ha, highest offensive firepower that we're going to see this year next to FSU. Again, I'm just talking about the SEC currently. And I'm glad that we able we were able to show that, hey, we can keep up with that. Because Spencer Rattler, what he did, we had to expect those things, right? We, we, we knew that he was going to do what he did. Be able to escape out of the pocket, extend plays, allow for his receivers to get open, and hit his wide receivers. We shouldn't have been shocked when we saw that happening. We shouldn't have been frustrated. It was frustrating because on top of that, they were able to run the ball with ease. That's where it started to get frustrated. I think that for the most part, they did a pretty good job containing Spencer. I think us not being able to stop the run as effectively kind of got us away from, allowed Spencer to have much more success early on uh, than I think he probably would have if we were able to stop the run. So, again, easy things to fix, and we're going to get into the defense as a whole uh, just conversation here in just a minute because I have my own thoughts and opinions about that because, again, going into this game, or at least two weeks ago, we were top five defense. We've fallen since then, not too much, but we have fallen. Uh, since that game. Again, be sure, make sure to smash the like button even though I'm an idiot and for some reason cannot seem to get this thing not muted every time I decide to do a front flip on this damn thing. So, 
I don't know. Uh, let's talk about the top 10, top 20 defense. So, look, the defense obviously uh, had its struggles, had its woes, to, to say the least. And top 20, it still is currently ranked. I was looking at it before the show. I'm not making this up. This is currently updated because it says seven games played. So right now we've got seven games played, 381 plays, uh, 2,100 yards. Uh, I think that puts us out of the top 20, the second highest for most allowed yards behind Notre Dame. Now, Notre Dame has played some pretty high-tempo offenses, so take that take that into consideration. We're behind Miami currently. Uh, yards per play, we're at 5.74. Offensive touchdowns, 18, which we lead the top 20 with uh, allowing offensive touchdowns. So something to work on there. And yards per game, we're at 312. Again, one of the higher ones in the top 20. As we should be, obviously, we're at the 20th, but there's people even behind us that are a little bit lower than we are. So this actually, I think, is ranked by 20. So we are the worst there for yards per, for, per game. So again, the defense is something that we were extremely high on going into the season. Uh, but now... You know, a little more question marks there. But I do want to say something because there was a play. I tried to find the play so I could show it to explain what I was talking about. And we've talked about this for the last two weeks with Stephen Harris. And when he's on tomorrow for Champs Corner, Monday live at 835, I'm going to pick his brain about this some more. We're also going to be uh, opening up the floor to you guys. If you guys have questions for Stephen Harris for tomorrow, I'm going to put a, tw- a tweet out as well as a post out for you guys to ask your questions about what you want to ask for Stephen Harris. So, uh, but there was a play where you see Armstrong flipping out on Jaden Hill to roll over to get to the side as if he knew what was going to happen because that next play was a rollout run that ran right to that side. And I, they were able to get the stop because Hill got over. But if Hill doesn't get over, a gap doesn't get filled, and the running back goes for another 15 yards. So there's two things. It felt like there's a few, there's a, a few, uh, uh, a drop in execution from a few players. One, two, it felt like every play we were behind the eight ball. It felt like they were trying to figure out what call it was and where they needed to go. That to me is an easy fix if that's what the problem was. That just not getting the play out quick enough. And if they they see if teams see hey high tempo puts these guys into a, a frenzy, then we've got to figure something out. So I'm hoping that's a, a a key of focus for this week. It's like look, I don't mind you rotate now. I don't mind you guys kind of being on your on your heels a little bit. But we need to be able to call play quickly and so everyone knows where they're at and they're not running on the football field because, there's, dude, I'm telling you, but before each step, everyone's looking at one another like, what are, are you doing? Are you tackling him or am I tackling him? And you can't have that, especially with a team like Georgia and Mizzou and LSU who have been doing phenomenal offensively these past few weeks. You can't have that happening. So that's going to be a big, a, a big point of emphasis, I think, going into this next week, these next two weeks as we ramp up for Georgia. But... Again, I'm not concerned. I think the talent's there. I think we've, we've seen what the talent can do when, when need be. But there's two weeks now we've, we've, been, we've been shredded uh, from, from the run game from teams that have not ran efficiently on other teams. So that is going to be a big point. Again, a focus. I think if there's anybody that can, can right in the ship here and who I trust and believe currently, it is Arson Armstrong. I'm a full believer in his ability to get it done. I think he made adjustments in the second half. And here's the biggest thing. Here's the biggest thing that I love. And we're going to get into a whole belief and a whole preaching ceremony here in just a minute. The ability to get the stop there at the end for the Gators to get the ball back, absolutely massive. Even after the Cam Jackson unnecessary rough in the passer penalty, without that happening, we get the ball back even sooner. But besides the point, that happens. You have to reset and do everything over again, and they still get the stop. Have them go you know, three and out and then punt the football away. So huge kudos to those guys for being locked in. And really closing it and clamping it down in the fourth quarter there and shutting things down to give the Florida Gators the ability to win. Because again, going to that fourth quarter, we're down 10. And they go, they goose egg the fourth quarter. <coughs> and up until that point, they're moving the ball with ease. So that's 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 all good for me. And uh, <clears throat> obviously rolling into this Georgia game, you know, we're gonna feel much more confident. I feel much more confident going into it. Let me check the uh the uh <clears throat> Golly, the poll here. So, 201 votes. I said, "How are we feeling, Gators?" We got 35% saying "Woo," 36 saying "How about them?" 2% say "Beaver Bomb," and 27% say "We want Georgia." I love the uh, the mixture of votes there. We want Georgia. <clears throat> I love it. I love it. I will be interesting to see too uh, if there's going to be any changes on the defense, any any switcheroos for players, and and you know if we'll start to see some more young guys. And obviously, 
Uh, we a lot of young guys and A Mizell getting a, getting a, getting the snap yesterday. They they went deep with him, which I love seeing that. Had him double team, but I love seeing it uh, nonetheless. So another big factor here that we got coming up this week is L J McCray. It will be announcing his commitment here, which should be exciting to see that happen. Obviously, on the twenty first, he'll be committing out of the likes of Florida, Georgia, FSU. Auburn, and Miami. I didn't even know Auburn was in the mix, so that's a new one for me. Miami, I know, has kind of been slowly creeping around. I truly feel it's between Georgia and FSU. And it's going to be uh, an interesting to watch how this comes down again. As of now, I feel pretty good about it. We felt good about this entire time, and I think what we saw yesterday has to make us feel even better about this class as a whole. I have an, an article from Corey Bender, I believe, where he put down the tw- this is some of the the reactions from the recruits going to go over that. Cause I think it's great just to hear their thoughts on the game and their perspective of it. Because again, after the loss to Kentucky, everybody's on this bandwagon that we're not going to be able to get it done. It's over. The recru- recruiting class is going to fall apart. I think what we saw yesterday shows that, man, this team's really bought in. This culture is changing. They had a ton of young guys playing a ton of young guys, making an impact. Eugene Wilson, making an impact. So that has to excite a recruiting class coming in and say, man, this, this class is almost there. And, I can be that guy that puts them over the edge. If I'm if I'm Elgin McCrazy, man, that D line just needs somebody like me to to get a few more stops. And, and we're not five and two. We're we're we're, we're seven and zero oh, heading to Georgia, right? So that's where the, the key points are of what the selling point is going to be. Is that look, we're a few pieces away from being a real threat to the SEC again, and you can be a part of that and and be and not just be another number like you will be if you go to the likes of Georgia or Miami right, where you're just going to kind of lose to Georgia Tech by not kneeling the football or get blown up by UNC. You're going to come here and make an impact right away. So, huge win for us, I think. And it's weird. I know I said when we lose, it doesn't impact recruiting. The reason why I say that currently, because I believe that Napier has sold a true dream of like, look, this year's going to be bumpy, but what we're going to learn and what we're going to do is we're going to grow as a team and we're going to continue to move forward. And we've shown that week in and week out. And when you're able to show that progression faster and sooner, that's where that starts to pay dividends for the recruiting. Again, I don't unless we have an atrocious loss, which Kentucky was, but we thankfully we had a good win against Tennessee. I don't feel like it falls back as much, just especially with the guys committed. Now, guys that are on the fence of committing, yeah, I think winning and losing has a little bit of an impact on it, just because you want to see how again the progression is going. But I think a win like this, again, you can see okay, there was holes here, here, and here. One of the holes was my position. And I know I'm better than that guy. And I know I can go in and make an impact right away. And I know so-and-so is coming here and so-and-so is coming here. Hey, we look good. We look good. I like where this is headed. And I think, you know, if if you're if you're truly motivated, you're truly bought in, it's like, hey, coach is telling me this and I'm seeing it on the football field. He's, he's honest. He's telling me the truth. And you may not always get that from time to time with other schools. So, <clears throat> look, really excited. Hopefully we'll be suited up here in six days on the 21st, which is, what day is, like, what day is that? That's Saturday? It is Saturday. You know, it is kind of ir- ironic. We don't have a game on Saturday. And neither does Georgia. Mm. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Again, we've heard nothing about good stuff here. So, we'll see how it plays out for LJ McCray uh, and commit to the Florida Gators. Again, top three class if he locks it in. Obviously, just getting the, the, the five-star bump there as of recently, so should be good to go. Uh, The recruits had a lot to say as well about the win against South Carolina. Again, this was in a Corey Bender article, I believe. I want to make sure I give credit when credit is due uh, to the right person. But look, Jordan Seaton, obviously a big target of ours that we've been uh, looking at to land, hopefully. He says the Gators are going to be going back to the good old days, good win on the road. Love that again. I think that's something we've been preaching this entire time is getting back to culture, getting back to what we were. So here in, you know, a, a... a player that's not currently committed, <clears throat> see that and feel that vibe, a five-star recruit that was there just two weeks ago. Again, somebody, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You saw, okay, the offensive line needs help. You could be a factor right away. Right away. You're a five-star guy. You will come in and you will start. Or you'll at least be a second rep guy. You know, we could go to the portal and get somebody a little bit better than you. <clears throat> but you're going to have an impact without a shadow of a doubt. And I know I can't remember who he's between right now. Uh, I know Colorado kind of came like last little, little last little move there, but huge one there. Uh, Nasir Johnson, obviously, he's already committed four star defensive lineman. I was hyped about the win. I knew they could pull it off. Love that defensive tackle, uh, Michael B. So he was committed. 
three-star uh, defensive tackle. He has decommitted, but things maybe flipping back around. It was a, a hard-fought game defensive line-wise. It looked good to me. Then Miles Graham, obviously, fully bought in Florida Gator. It was a crazy ending, and crazy ending it was. So so it's cool to hear what the recruits, recruits have to say about these things. Again, shout-out to Corey Bender from On3 for getting the, the, the quotes here from these recruits. There's a few more from 2025 guys, but I've kind of focused on the immediate future with the guys that are committed. So two of these guys are committed. Two of them are not committed. All in all, all, all had good things to say, and we're watching. So that, again, has to excite you as a Gator to see the recruits are, are, are noticing. My favorite one, again, is Jordan Seaton. The Gators are going back to the good old days, and that's something we talk on Monday with Stephen Harris is getting back to that vibe, getting back to that culture. I think Brandon Spikes has done a phenomenal job of bringing that back in. I think Billy has done a good job of trying to relinquish or, or you know, bring back that old style of energy and just hearing him talk about how they have their history classes and their history lessons of what Florida and Tennessee is and what Florida and Kentucky are. I, I'm excited to hear the noise and what they plan to do for these two weeks to understand what Florida Georgia is, right? The thing about Swamp Kings in that moment where Brandon Spikes took down No Sean Marino, we need one of those moments, right? Who's going to be the guy? Where Where's going to be our poster child for that game that comes out and levels somebody to make a statement to say, hey, I know y'all been the dogs for the last two years, right? Literally and figuratively, but we coming, right? I'm going to punch you in the mouth and we'll let you know. And it's going to be, hey, it's going to be a dog fight. It's going to be a gator fight today here in Duval. So I think that if there's a time that Georgia is the most beatable, you would have to believe that it's this year. And Bark Bowers doesn't seem, I mean, we don't know, you know, it's unknown whether or not he will play. You've got Carson Beck, who has looked phenomenal, but... Carson Beck hasn't really faced true adversity, I would say, just yet. They had a little bit of a setback against Auburn and a little bit of a setback against South Carolina. But has he truly been rattled? So that's got to be your focus is how do we rattle this guy? How do we get to him as soon as possible? They started to run the ball more efficiently over the past few weeks. Passing wide, they look better. So look, they're going to be well. And that defense is obviously, it's Georgia's defense. It's going to be a dog. It's going to be... I, can't, I, can't, I don't want to keep saying dog, but it's going to be a nasty one, uh, to say the least, on how it plays out. But look, good to hear from these recruits and good, good to hear what they had to say about everything as well. Now, obviously, I love to see what the players have to say, as always, too, after the game. This is the first time that a lot of them had a lot to say, which is really exciting. Princely with a W here <laughs> with Let's Fucking Go and uh, Ludacris and the boys eat, uh, just slamming down some chicken. I loved it. Arlos with his, his uh, he's geeking. Cam Jackson with his Gators and Kelby Collins going 15 is him. Kelby Collins seeing a lot of playing time. Did not see a tweet from Trevor, unfortunately. And I wonder again how much his injury has impacted his limited play as of yesterday. But we'll, we'll see how that how that plays out. But look, I always love to see what the, the players are saying after the game. And it felt like they were rushing to get to their phone. Because I swear, man, as soon as the game was over, these tweets popped out as if they were just in there. And obviously there was the tweets... Uh, of a few guys of them partying in the in the locker room. Shamar James went live. They're partying. So really cool to see the energy and the culture. And then Mark Hawk tweets out, believe. And I love this. And I've got a video to go along with that. I'm probably going to get muted again, so just bear with me. But take a look at this video, which I absolutely love. Right now. And all you fellas need to do is believe it. Oh! oh. 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 All right, so... Ted Lasso is the greatest TV show on earth. It's absolutely phenomenal. And what was funny is I actually queued up this entire Believe uh, just scenario. And then I saw Mark Hawk tweet a Believe. And I was like, well, this is obviously meant to be. So the video and the idea to talk about Ted Lasso in this, in this Believe moment came to my mind before I saw the tweet, just so you guys are aware, which makes this even, even better. Uh, but look, this is something that I talk about time and time again with college football and why people say, hey, Sean, who are you going to pick? And I always go with the Gators because I always believe that they can get the job done. Talent-wise, we will always say on paper, they have the talent to get it done. Sometimes it's about believing whether or not you are talented enough to get it done. And I think what this game did and what it showed is that the offense, one, now believes in themselves. I think Mertz believes like, hey, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm him. I've got the ability to do some nasty things here and do a phenomenal job. And so that, that's really important for that team to get on a good level. And I also, too, the defense, believing in this offensive, like, yeah, we've got a really good team. We need to step up on our end. Uh, there was a moment where, obviously, Mertz heads over to the defense, right? Basically probably saying, hey, get me the effing ball back, and I'm going to go down and score. 
it's it's things like that, and I think that's what excited me more more than anything. And again, I know there's haters in here saying you guys suck. You barely beat you know a two win team. All these it, it, all these things that they're they're right on. But we as Gator fans who have been in the trenches, who've been following this since forever now, right? It, it's not it's not just the W. It's not just getting the win over South Carolina. It's breaking the the curse that we've have so much you know brought up time and time again of not winning on the road. It was. The, them throwing the ball deep, getting creative in their play calling. Graham Mertz going out there and just slinging the rock with with no with no with no worry at all. Not throwing a pick, not turning the ball over, being perfect near near perfect with penalties, only having six penalties. The special teams look much better. No dumb mistakes there. So all these things, right? That's what was just really exciting. It was like, and that was what was even upsetting to me was when it came down to the end. I was like, we have done almost everything perfectly. Outside of allow, you know, 600 yards rushing on the ground, feels like we played a damn near perfect game, and we're gonna lose this bitch. And I knew that people were gonna be like, "I just told you, Billy can't get it done." So it felt good that you checked damn near 90 percent of the boxes the correct way, and you were able to execute and able to get it done. That's huge, and you got to believe now, like, hey, we 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 are good enough to beat anybody that we play. I'm not trying to say that Florida is the best team out there. I understand that Georgia's good. I know FSU is good, but you have to now believe that we have the talent and we have the ability to go and win these football games. And that's what that's all that I'm saying. That's all that I'm saying. You can't disagree with that. And again, I know those haters are going to come in here and say, you're crazy, you're an idiot. That's fine. But this is how we are. Josh Prey was on here on Wednesday. And what did he say? This is, this, is, this is my life. I eat and breathe this shit. You guys saw my reaction yesterday. I love this shit. I had to go lay down afterwards. I laid on my wife and I go, I know it's just a football game, baby, but I love this shit. She laughs. She's like, I know you do, baby. Like, it's just, it's a blast. It's a blast being a Florida Gator. The ups and the downs. And this is why, because we've been down for so long, it feels like, like, yeah, we're going to get a little rambunctious on a big win like this because it's been a while since we've seen a big win like that. When I'm watching this play yesterday, when I'm watching this play out, I'm like, please, just give me a Felipe Franks. Give me a uh, a Will Greer moment. I want to hear, uh, it was, you know, Mick, I want to hear Mick Huber, but I want to hear the, oh, my, it's an insane solemn again. That's what I wanted to feel. I'm, I'm picturing that in my head. As that that last play is happening, going, please just let me feel that again. It's been a while. So to to be able to to tap back into to that and get a big win in a big way with some of the two two, two best guys out there, man, Ricky Pierce on Graham Merch, two guys that have look, th- those guys are really bought in. They transferred in, right? I mean, they they chose us in a way. Recruiting's a little bit different. They choose us, but it, there's much more options. I feel like so maybe those are more intimate, but. At this time of your life, like when you when you're trans, tr- choosing to transfer, it's like, hey, this is your last shot. Where are you gonna go to make an impact? And those two guys just chose to come to Florida, so really happy for them and really happy for Ricky, man. I really feel like his his draft stock has skyrocketed over the past few weeks. Just big moments, big time games, ten catches for 160 yards plus or something like that with a touchdown, game winning touchdown to boot his catch, awesome stuff, and also too, Graham Mertz resurging his career. I mean, all of a sudden, this guy went from probably not never being drafted, never being talked about to, hey, if you're if you're probably looking at like this guy could be a really good QB too, come in and learn under a few guys just because of how much of a transition that he's made under a year of Billy Napier. So all in all, love seeing everybody kind of just do their job, and of course, Trey Smack getting it done. But hey, guys, be sure to smash the like button. Over three hundred, over three hundred people in here. Even though I've had some issues with the audio today, which I do not know why, uh, we're rocking and rolling. So be sure to smash the like button. And uh, subscribe if you are brand new here. We grew like a little weed yesterday with all of the content we were pumping out. It was a blast. So I see you guys arguing with a few guys in here. I wouldn't even respond to them. Don't don't let them rain our, our parade, boys and girls. We're, we're getting the W here. We're doing we're doing some good work around here. Uh, but yeah, good stuff there. Trey Smack, Billy, offensive coordinator, top ten defense. LJ McCray, obviously keep an eye out for this next Saturday. So look, we we don't have a game Saturday, but we could still get some good news on Saturday. Which in my my account, you know, that would put us into the winning category. So now we're going to be six and two heading to Georgia, because that's that's a W in my book. You know what I mean? So we'll see. We have our show later tonight, seven thirty, the college game day recap show. So be sure to tune in for that, boys. Five bucks from Big Dick Billy brought the energy this week. Much needed win. Offensive clearly started to get gel. Yes, this is a good point. Thank you, Christian, for reminding me about the energy. So we've got our uh, sideline reporter in Chris Storley. He goes to damn near every game. I think he goes to every game. He was at South Carolina. Called me last night, excuse me, yesterday, before the game. He goes, man, I'm feeling a little eerie. It's kind of quiet out here. 
He's a game cox, is rowdy. It reminds me of the Kentucky atmosphere. They're nuts. They're crazy, going going wild out here. And uh, now he he didn't think he got they got there early, but it's still being confirmed that the Gators did arrive to the stadium earlier than what they normally do. He was saying they didn't, but who knows what he saw, didn't see. Again, he goes to all the games, so he was just kind of basing it off those other games. And he goes, dude, he called me when he got into the stadium. He's like, dude, the energy in here from Gator fans is insane. It's way better than what it's in Kentucky. And he goes, the sideline, dude, going absolutely nuts. Graham Mertz was waving his towel around. The entire team was jumping up and down, getting buck wild. And even still, when we were down, we were getting punched in the mouth. He goes, the team was still getting buck nasty on the sideline. He goes, at no point did they show any sign of being down, of being sad, or being or being quit, or being out of it. So, I loved hearing that. I think that's, again, I talked about that yesterday. It's my biggest compliment towards Billy is being to keep these guys locked in. Even last year, when it wasn't really Billy's team, it was 50-50, I still think he did a good job of keeping the guys bought in throughout the entire season. Now, we know what happened afterwards. was mass exodus, et cetera, uh, et cetera. But he still was able to keep them locked in and bought in. It's something Mullen did not do his last season there. And this year, even more so. I mean, you have gone through this up and down roller coaster of these first few weeks. That Kentucky loss, you really could have lost the entire locker room. You really could have. And you didn't. You come back, you bounce back, you get a big win against Vandy. And now you're down 10 points on the road and you get another win. This is something I talked about too early on is facing adversity. They had faced the adversity against Utah. They faced massive adversity events versus Kentucky. And you got two things you can do. You can it's fight or flight. And they chose to fight and respond. And it paid off. And he kept saying that over and over again. This team's different. This, this team's different. And I didn't believe him, but after what I saw yesterday, you got to start to believe that things are changing uh, in the right direction. And this team is starting to find an identity uh, as something that we've lacked for quite some time and something that we've talked on this show. It felt like yesterday there was a little bit of a discovery of who they are. And now maybe in the locker room they've always had it, but it felt like there's a, there's a difference, right? We as people, we might ha- we might know who we are. We might have an identity that we carry around with ourselves throughout the day. But when you really figure out, I believe, who you are and you have confidence who you are, you wear it. You don't have to say it anymore. You just operate in that. And then people know, like, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so. He's really good with this. Or he's dialing at this. Or, like, yeah, this, this so-and-so is like this. And that's when you really uh, encompass that I- and I- identity. So maybe behind the scenes, they have known who they are, but they haven't had that overflowing confidence that it shows to the rest of us. And I felt like yesterday we got a glimpse into that. You know what I mean? So that was good to see. And my favorite part of all of it, again, was the clip that I played beforehand of Ricky calling his shot with Dave after Dave, you know, did that with Montreal as well just a year ago against South Carolina, taking it to the house with, with you know, at the, at the end there for the game winner. It's incredible. I mean, it's it's the greatest show on television. I don't know. I don't know what else you're doing on Wednesday nights, but if you're not tuned in to High Top Sports, you're out of your damn mind. I, I, I'm working to get him back on this week. That is my goal here, boys, to get him back on, to follow up, to have some more questions. Because how can you not talk to him again? Uh, it would be absolutely incredible. I appreciate you guys hopping in here, though. Three hundred strong for almost uh, just an hour. Again, go Gators, boys and girls. Apologize for the uh, <laughs> the audio interference. I'm an idiot, but I'll get it cleaned up here. I apologize. But again, good show as always. I love you guys. Be sure to smash the like button, subscribe. Uh, be, again, be tuned in tonight, 7.30. We're going to do our our, our uh, uh, college recap show. Then tomorrow with Stephen Harris, Champ, Champs Corner, 8.35, live at 8.35. I'll make it a post on Twitter and on YouTube if you guys have some questions for Stephen Harris about yesterday's game and just your uh, your thoughts on it. Let's roll into Wednesday. Let's have a celebration celebration on Wednesday. Hopefully we'll have some good recruiting noise for this week. And then obviously the following week is going to get ready for Georgia. So... A lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of things to be tuned in for these next two weeks. Thankfully, we get to go into a buy on a high because I don't know how I would have carried myself these next two weeks taking that out. But I love you, boys. Be good. Be safe. Happy Sunday to you. Go watch some football. What am I doing here? I'm struggling this morning, boys. I need to get my coffee in quicker. <laughs> be good, boys. Love you. Look at it, look at it. Don't want to sleep,